Good afternoon. I'm Steve Key with your Zoomer Radio News. Sunny for the rest of Family Day. Enjoy it while it lasts. Tomorrow, cloudy flurries or rain showers beginning in the morning. And a high of plus three. Right now, four degrees Celsius in Toronto, 39 Fahrenheit. The wind chill makes it feel like minus two. In the news, in a major show of support, U.S. President Joe Biden made an unannounced visit to Ukraine nearly a year after Russia invaded its sovereign neighbor. In Kyiv, Biden met with government officials, including Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. One year later, Kyiv stands and the world stands with you. Biden announced an additional $500 million in U.S. assistance and reassured Ukraine of America and allied support. A people's court in the Netherlands is putting Russian President Vladimir Putin on trial for the crime of aggression over his invasion of Ukraine. It's a symbolic move to close an accountability gap in the absence of an international tribunal with jurisdiction. The court has no legal powers, but prosecutors say they will present evidence that Putin committed the crime of aggression by ordering the invasion nearly a year ago and unleashing a devastating war that has killed thousands and left towns and cities in ruins. The Ontario legislature set to return to business tomorrow following its winter break and questions about Premier Doug Ford's relationship with developers and the expansion of private health care delivery will dominate lawmakers' return. A new bill containing promised health reforms will include allowing community clinics and diagnostic centres to perform more procedures and tests and letting health care professionals from other provinces work in Ontario without registering right away. Meantime, the province's new NDP leader, Merritt Stiles, says she's working on a new complaint to the Integrity Commissioner about Ford, developers, and the removal of protected Greenbelt lands for housing. Toronto police are investigating in the alleged pushing of a man onto the tracks at the city's busiest subway station. Shortly before 4.30 yesterday, a man was allegedly shoved down to the tracks at Young and Bloor, but he was able to get up and onto the platform and was not hurt. Coming up on Zoomer Radio's Fight Back with guest host Jane Brown, the Zoomer Squad talks on Family Day, Jimmy Carter's legacy and longevity. Also a check-in on a Globe story from last week about China influencing the 2021 federal election. As always, we'd like you to be part of the conversation, so get in line now by calling one of ours, 416-360-0740 or toll-free 1-866-744-740. Members of the Baptist Church in Jimmy Carter's hometown of Plains, Georgia, lifted up the man they affectionately called Uncle Jimmy in prayer on Sunday, days after his foundation revealed the 98-year-old is terminally ill. Carter served as 39th U.S. president from 1977 to 1981. Deacon Zach Steele worked closely with Carter throughout the years. For the longest time, you know... 30-plus years, President Carter taught Sunday school a couple times a month. Carter was a little-known Georgia governor when he began his bid for the presidency ahead of the 1976 election. Andrew Lloyd Webber, the English composer who created the scores for blockbuster musicals such as Cats, Phantom of the Opera, and Evita, has written the anthem for King Charles III's coronation, adapting a piece of church music that encourages singers to make a joyful noise. The work by Weber is one of a dozen new pieces Charles commissioned for the grand occasion, taking place May 6th at Westminster Abbey. In sports, it was a bit of a disappointing effort for the Leafs last night in Chicago, dropping a 5-3 decision to the Hawks. Defenseman Morgan Riley picked up his 400th point as a Leaf on a first-period assist, and he says they were just sloppy. Being able to tie the game was good, and then obviously giving up odd man going the other way to give them the lead. Um, just mistakes like that, I feel like. Um, just kind of you know, taking your eye off the ball, and a good team can make you pay. Patrick Kane scored three goals for the Hawks. Max Domi had a goal and three assists. Leafs are next up tomorrow night. In Buffalo. Zuma Radio weather sunshine this afternoon. Overnight, clear and minus four. Tomorrow, cloudy flurries or rain showers beginning in the morning and ending near noon with a high of plus three. Right now, it's four degrees Celsius in Toronto, 39 Fahrenheit. The wind chill makes it feel like minus two. I'm Steve Key. News next hour on Zuma Radio. Now, fight back with Libby Snymer on Zuma Radio. 